Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, I wanted to give you a bit of a background story and in-depth review of my latest big watch purchase to kick off 2020. And that is this guy here. This is my Grand Seiko GMT housing their newly developed 9F86 quartz caliber movement just to keep track of the GMT complication and also regulate this watch to plus or minus 10 seconds per year. Now of course I will give you all of the technical specifications during the review portion of this video and uh, let me just give you some background on how I came to acquire such a fine timepiece. So over the Christmas holidays I was looking to pick up a new Grail watch to kick off the new year and Grand Seiko has been on my radar for a long time. You know in the past I've had the opportunities to try on and potentially purchase like the Grand Seiko Snowflake but it never really connected to me only just because I already have a Seiko Sarb 035 which in my opinion is quite similar obviously it doesn't have spring drive but it's a great everyday dressier timepiece that I could wear so I tend to gravitate more towards a watch that has a useful complication like GMT so let me drop in some footage of me going to my authorized dealer to try on this watch in person. You can see them sizing it up for my wrist. And then ultimately, I did make this fine watch purchase. Now I think for the price, um, these currently trend for $3,900 plus tax in Canadian dollars. You are getting so much watch for the money. Uh, the level of finishing and just the, uh, the overall design of the watch really uh, connects with me. And I'm really happy to have it in my collection. So let me flip perspectives now so you guys can check out the watch up close. And we'll get into the nitty gritty review details as well. Okay friends, so we're in my studio now. And I just wanted to show you the full kit that comes when you purchase this uh, Grand Seiko GMT. So you can see it's resting on the inner display box. In the background you'll note that I have some Grand Seiko literature as well as the outer display box. I'll just bring up the hang tag here. So this is the model number SBGN003, made in Japan. And the nice thing about buying this watch at an authorized dealer is sometimes they'll give you this thing here. So inside, you'll see I actually have a loop made by Grand Seiko. And I love the audacity of Grand Seiko. They're daring you to loop their dial. So actually, let's go in at a macro level and I'll show you why they're giving you this loop in the first place. Starting with the applied indices, you can see that each of them are multifaceted. They have really nice polished bevels to the sides of them. They also have some really nice horizontal striping on the tops and really well evenly applied luminescent material for each of the indexes. And then if you look at the hand stack, Note how the second hand just hits each one of those marks perfectly, which is amazing for anyone who has quartz watch OCD like I do. And the other thing I'll mention about the movement of these hands, if you look at the minute hand, you can see that it doesn't just uh, rotate one time per minute. It actually advances incrementally, almost in sync with a second hand. It probably aids in keeping this watch really, really accurate. All right, uh, now would be a good time to go over the specs of the watch. So across the case here, this is just over 39 millimeters in dimension. If you flip to the side, um, from lug to lug here, this is about 45 millimeters. And the case thickness is just a hair over 12 millimeters to a flat sapphire crystal. And then this lug opening here for the supplied bracelet is 19 millimeters. Now the 19 millimeter bracelet uh, does seem like a divisive design cue from Grand Seiko. I wish they went with a 20 mil lug opening so you're open to a host of aftermarket strap and secondary bracelet options. So the design of this watch is what really gets me. Um, for a GMT I don't think you can get really any cleaner than this. You have a fixed outer GMT bezel. And uh, most people will obviously equate this or compare this to uh, a Rolex Explorer 2, the Polar Explorer. But aside from that, I don't think it shares any resemblance to the Explorer whatsoever. And then we'll also talk about the design of this uh, Grand Seiko GMT movement. 
I know the elephant in the room for some people is that, yes, this is a quartz movement, but it's quartz done to its highest standard, in my opinion. In fact, the uh, 9F86 caliber is um, put together by no fewer than two professional watchmakers. One actually regulates uh, the cam and the step motor um, for the advancing or jumping the hour hand and adjusting the date aperture, which I'll get into in a second. And then the other watchmaker will actually is responsible for QCing and putting together the nine jeweled movement and making sure that it is properly calibrated. It's thermally compensated, so it's actually very accurate, even with big temperature fluctuations. And again, it keeps accuracy up to plus or minus 10 seconds a year with a three year power reserve and an end of life battery indicator. So when this does get down to low battery, um, the second hand will just skip twice. And that will be your kind of indication to go to your uh, local authorized dealer or you can attempt to do it yourself and just replace the battery. If you unscrew the screw down crown here and pull this out to the first position, what you can actually do is independently jump your uh, hour hand here and note that it's not hacking the movement. And then the other thing too is that you can see that you can go back or forth and actually change the date without negatively impacting the movement itself. So this is a feature that you don't see too often. I think aside from Rolex, I don't know of any other brand that will do that. And if you pull this crown all the way out, you can hack the movement. Well, it will move the, the red GMT hand for your uh, reference time uh, along with the hour and minute hand once the movement is fully hacked. So in case you couldn't tell, the way I have this watch set up now is that the red GMT hand actually matches the same time as my local time. And I did that intentionally. So you can actually see that it's uh, about 3.40 in the afternoon, which corresponds to... Um, just after 1500 on the GMT hand. So in its basal state right now, this is actually a good AM PM indicator for me because I can look at this watch, see that it's about 340, but immediately know that I'm in PM instead of AM with the uh, GMT hand set this way. And then if I do choose to travel, it's very easy just to unscrew the crown and then jump the uh, hour hand to my local time while keeping my reference time here in Southwest Ontario. Now, the other nice thing that makes this such a well-designed watch too, is that they added kind of a day and night indicator on the chapter ring. You can see that it's black um, for the top half, and then it's white here for the bottom half, just to give you a little bit of more visual separation between the GMT functionality that this watch has. And man, I love that black gloss dial. It just makes this watch really legible. Now finishing around the case is also top notch. Note the large polished bevel here. And uh, of course, because this is a Grand Seiko, they um, do this by hand, a method called Zeratsu polishing that gives you an optically smooth mirror-like finish. And then to the side, you can see that it's really nice horizontal brushwork that's done. Even with the crown, you can see how deeply etched in and engraved the Grand Seiko logo is. And again, just differential polishing and uh, brushing along the crown there and the crown guards. I think even this bezel really impresses me. Uh, the fixed bezel, it's circular brushing um, and then it's filled in uh, those engraved lacquer GMT markings. And then at the very edge of it, where it touches the mid case, it's high polish as well. And then you get into the bracelet, which is very well integrated into the case. Note that there are uh, lug apertures here that you can swap this out for an aftermarket strap, a uh, leather strap, or like a silicone strap, which I'll show you in a second. And then you have like a three link bracelet system here. Again, Nice job on the finishing. You have high brush across the tops. Very fine bevels that give way to polish on the flanks of the bracelet. And then the bracelet is fixed in with double-sided screws. And uh, 
I gotta say, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the screw system that Grand Seiko used because I thought if you you would just be able to unscrew the full link, but it's really only the head of the screw that unscrews and then the pin falls out at a separate piece. So you really gotta be careful when sizing this. Note that the class, regrettably, does not have any uh, micro adjustment holes, but it is milled out very nicely. And it's also very thin. However, there are uh, half links supplied. So you can try and get a perfect fit. For me, this bracelet, uh, it's not fitted extremely well to my wrist. I really wish they had one or two micro adjustment holes just to give you that fine level of adjustment that's needed. But overall, the bracelet feels solid, uh, but it's, it's not the best bracelet in the world, if I'm being honest. I actually prefer it on... Uh, a Spartan silicone elite strap. Uh, you can buy them in 19 millimeters and I'll throw up some footage of me wearing it on the Barton uh, elite strap and I think it just hugs your wrist so well. Um, the combination of the uh, suppleness of the silicone and then just the way the case shape and the way the lugs turn down and hug your wrist just makes it extremely extremely comfortable. Now here you can see the case back as well is finished to a high level. Uh, you can see that you have the Grand Seiko seal, the lion, and it has some really nice differential brushing and polishing. And then you kind of have this circular polish and mirror finish to the outside of the uh, screwed in case back. This watch is water resistant to 100 meters. And so guys, to wrap up this video, overall, I just think for a GMT uh, watch, this Grand Seiko just fires on all cylinders. I love the simplicity of it, but also the execution as well. You know, you have that day-night indicator on the chapter ring. You have the very clean and very legible GMT markings on a fixed bezel. And the rest of the watch is just finished really well and very comfortable. It's not perfect by any means, though. I mean, I do think that the 19mm lug width is kind of a letdown. But again, you would just have a lot more strap options if it was 20 millimeters. And not to harp on the bracelet too much, but I really wish that the clasp had some micro adjustment holes on it. Um, so you could fine tune the adjustment a little bit better. I'd love to hear your feedback. I know some people um, are totally against quartz watches. And at the end of the day, I'm not trying to convince you um, to start buying quartz watches if that's not your thing. But if you are going to buy one quartz watch, I would argue that the design of this one is really uh, leaps and bounds above most other quartz watches that are offered, even from Swiss luxury brands. So guys, please uh, leave a like if you enjoy the content. Feel free to leave me a comment in the description below. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next video.